Good afternoon and welcome at the Batch Team Talk. Thank you all for being here. A lot of people played with this batch and this uh, awesome Batch Team will tell you all about it. I hope there will be lots of questions and interaction, but please give it up for the whole Batch Team, but in this case also for Sebastius. It's my keep out zone. I can't go there and I can't go there. I can only run away. <laughs> so, hi, welcome to our little presentation called The Adventures of Badge.team Sunk Cost Fallacy as a Lifestyle. Um, we owe the subtitle to uh, my friend Jurt, who uh, wrote a little piece about the Decennium Badge where uh, he claimed. Uh, for badge life people, sunk cost fallacy is not just an option, it's a, it's a way of life. Uh, yes, that's very true. So, I'm going to take you through uh, oh, uh, the, how, this, how this little project came into existence. Uh, we're going to show you what it did to the event and maybe some plans afterwards. Uh, I have two people joining me later on. That's Saka who did all the puzzles, the, the, the main quest design, which you all had uh, fun with and Benatsky, Ralph, uh, who did the software. And I'm leaving out a bunch of people, but that's going to be fine. So, <laughs> it's going to be fine. No, it, it, it's a team effort, and I'll, cong I'll thank everyone in a minute. That's going to be fine. So, we had some design goals, as usual. We always set a, a, a set of rules to make this uh, work. We want a name tag. That has to be, a badge has to be a name tag first. You have to be able to write your name or show it on a display, whatever people need to know who they're talking to, uh, else it wouldn't be a badge. Um, we need to make people connect or interact. I think we succeeded. Um, it should be incredibly easy to get started. No installing tool chains on your laptop, no looking through thick manuals, plug-in batteries, go. Um, it should be reusable after the event, and it should be available at the entrance. Um, so, this uh, was November, this is our timeline. Um, so, okay, yeah, we're go just going to do something basic because we don't have any time. Um, a basic soldering kit, maybe a heart shape with a Hacker Hotel logo on it, and done. Okay. Um, and then Dimitri came, here's some budget, and I want uh, this, and I want... Uh, and he was starting to control free, because we love you, Dimitri. <laughs> but then, um, at November 12th, Renzo started the secret Hacker Hotel 2020 design group, which he wasn't invited to. And we went uh, and we said, hey, we're going to make a badge for you. It's going to be cool. And you can't know anything. That's... Uh, <laughs> it takes a huge amount of trust to trust us with, your, uh, with the money of your sponsor. So thank you for that. So credit where credit is due. This is all Nicolette's fault. <laughs> uh, so she said, uh, so I'm obsessed with the fact that the heart shape we use today was first depicted by Egyptians, because cro crocodile hearts look like that. Okay, we could go full Egyptian theme. Could we really? Should we add puzzles to the badge? Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the, the 12th of November was, uh, I think, the most productive day in terms of concept. Uh, a lot of stuff was thought up back then. Uh, Simon says uh, the theme. Uh, Nicolette also did some cool sketches, like our heroes escaping from the evil cat, uh, Egyptian cat goddess uh, Bastet, which I'll talk to you in a bit. Um, took some convincing for our teammates. Uh, uh, I still don't get a strong feeling by the Egyptian stuff, though. It doesn't feel like Valentine. That's the point. In the beginning, it was related. <laughs> well, uh, Bastet is the god of love and of cats and of sex and of warfare. It's, it's a very active goddess. <laughs> so she's, it's totally related to Valentine. So we can, we can pull this off. Um, and Nicolette started uh, scribbling away with our ideas. And we were first on, uh, on a thinking like, hey, let's do something like a, a, a tablet and then add some art on top and then some components in the middle which also looked very pretty, but it, it, it didn't feel like it yet. Um, in the meantime, Ralph started to design a little dev board. So the little processor on your badge, let's see where it is. You can just see it just below the batteries, that little processor, that's this big, huge square you see in the center. 
uh, flipped upside down, and then he added some little wires in to start prototyping. And we, we, before that, we went into looking into Chinese microcontrollers, which are really cheap until you need to get the dev kit to program it. That costs 200 euros, and you can only get them in a few months' time, and you can only use it on Windows. Okay, no. <laughs> we'll just use something that has an open source tool, tool chain. So we came up with designing a challenge badge, and we came up with designing a mixed reality escape room. Uh, six challenges. That's why there's the letters hacker on the front on the necklace. Uh, so two challenges are up front on the badge. There's one you do with each other. That's uh, what some people have called the badge STD or the badge sex. Thank you for that visual <laughs> cue. Yeah, great. And there were and there were a few hidden inside the badge. So you have to so you can. Get started really easy. Just push a button and stuff will blink, and then you push another button and it will glow angrily a red with red eyes at you. And then you did it wrong, and you try again, and so suddenly you figure out, hey, this is Simon, I can actually do this. And then you figure out, hey, if I switch it off and on, it doesn't reset the random functions, so I can just do the same pattern over and over again and win really easily. Um, so what did you, what did you learn? Uh, if you haven't learned it already, you, you learned some basic decoding. Some people decoded the lanyard, uh, other codes. You, some people fixed barcodes. Who would have thought you would have fixed barcodes? It's cool. Uh, connecting USB serial and solving impossible puzzles. <laughs> so let's look at some early concepts. So in a few, I don't know if this was a few weeks later, but relatively fast after our original concept, um, Nicolette came up with uh, this concept art. This was still a sketch. This is not the finished art. This is a sketch. I, I have no idea how she does it. Um, and uh, to the left was the, the, the early prototype by Ralph. Uh, that's all the parts that are on your badge are, are there. And to the right is a prototype. Uh, there, there's three of them. Uh, we're donating one to... Uh, Jenny's, uh, well, not Jenny's, but to the Batch Museum she is putting together. She is very adamant about that it's not her museum. It's, uh, it's for us all. So go visit it at EMF to see the entire collection. Hacker wrote at the first tryout. I need to take a sip, just a second. So, um, the prototype boards, the test the circuit came in the day we had to order <laughs> the final production run. Uh, so Re Renze, to his credit, uh, built three of them, verified the circuit working, and uh, we went, uh, and away we went. And then two days later, oh, there are some short circuits in the circuit because KiCad is stupid. So this whole front, all, all the bits that are in, in gold, are conductive. Um, Somehow, KiCad isn't aware, uh, at least in the way we worked with it, isn't aware that it's conductive. So we just added some pins and pads and the stuff to the front, and then it all shorted out. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's what happens. Uh, let's see here. This is where we were. So what's on there? There is some hardware on there. There's an 80 tiny 8-bit microcontroller, 10 megahertz, 16 kilobytes of storage, 2 kilobytes of RAM, 265 bytes of EEPROM. Uh, we added in a 24C 265, 32 kilobyte EEPROM. We added a hall sensor. That's why you had to move around a painting with your badge in the at the reception area. There's a light sensor, which forced you to put your badge somewhere in your bag to make a challenge work. Um, there's a third sensor that's inside the AT Tiny, a temperature sensor. So that's why people were running to the hot air gun and roasting their badge and then running outside to cool it down again. It's <laughs> <laughs> it was like, hmm, we need another sensor. Hey, there's a temperature sensor inside. Oh, let's, let's what can we do with that? Yeah, that's how it existed, came into existence. There's 30 LEDs of them, which we came to regret a bit later. <laughs> I'll explain that to you in a bit. Uh, four buttons, an audio jack, which uh, does both audio and enables batch sex. So it's a multifunction connector. 
And this time, that, con that one part was not reversed, yes. <laughs> Hmm? The proper green? Yes. Oh, the proper green. Um, I'll let Ralph tell you about that during his uh, segment, because he has very strong opinions about LEDs and their colors. So <laughs> I'll let him, <laughs> I'll let, I'll let, I'll let him finish it up. Uh, yeah, I, I have some opinions too. I detest the color blue in LEDs, which has been overused for quite some time. So I'm happy to have been in two projects which have a s no, not a single blue LED. So. In China, um, the PCBs were made, uh, and then a few days before Chinese New Year, I got an email saying, "Hey, I'm very sorry, but I can't. Uh, I haven't got, uh, received the PCBs yet, so I can't put them into the assembly line, and the assembly company won't take any new orders." So yes, we have some bare PCBs in China, 350 of them, and no one to assemble them. So we were already, already planning to, okay, well, we could, in theory, we, we could hand pick and place it and put it through a machine. And then uh, Michael Stegen, where are you? There are you, said, hey, I've got a pick and place machine. Okay, we did some math. Okay, that should take 20 hours to do. We, could, we can, okay, we can in theory assemble it ourselves. So we arranged all that. And then the next morning, oh, and I also called Dimitri and said, hey, this is going to be bad. <laughs> Sorry, but this is going to be bad. <laughs> um, and the next morning was, hmm, I twisted his arm a bit. And uh, he's uh, the, the owner of the company is uh, helping out on the production line. And we're going to do your project. OK, <coughs> yeah. that's going to save us 20 hours of work. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is where uh, shit hits the fan. We made several significant boo-boos, which is why we got this nice little reversed uh, logo. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Dimitri and uh, the, 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 what do you call it? Tim. And Tim, get merch. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, we made several. We made a bunch of mistakes. Some were done to us, others were done by us. Um, for one, the little connector on the back. It's not supposed to be there. We specifically said, hey, we want it loose in the bag, so you can solder it on yourself as an extra ch challenge. Because it was supposed to go in the front. Which is, for, for, for you, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to use a shitty add-on, which uh, a few friends of us were already planning to make, uh, it doesn't work. Actually, you make a reverse polarity, so stuff you put on there will probably burn. So. Our good friends, and I forgot to add in the little slide which uh, showed a nice little detail, made an extra board. So uh, they made the, the beautiful scarab in a nice little kit. They assembled the kits here on the, uh, in their bungalow. And the, the tiny little board you see there is the, uh, the shitty add-on fixer. They have helped us uh, fix shitty add-ons since last year with the helpful other, and now they're fixing our shitty add-on again, making it slightly less shitty and add in a beautiful scarab. So, uh, and they gave them away for free. I, I don't know if there's any left. I'm looking at the people there. Sorry, all, all out. Yeah, they made 30 of them and they gave them away for free, which is uh, pretty awesome. So thanks for that. And thanks for the, for the little add-on board. Are there any bl plans to do a second run of the scarab? Uh, yeah, maybe, why not? Cool. <laughs> Who would be interested in, a, in getting a scarab? Me. OK. <laughs> That that'll be ten that'll be ten euros each, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the answer is yes. Then. The answer is yes. People want it. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, and it looks like this. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's boo boo number one, and it's not so bad because you could just plug in your USB serial on the back. Okay, you lost the soldering challenge, but eh, whatever. Gonna be fine. Okay, next boo boo. The lanyard. So we sent in this beautiful little design. Um, and for those who are counting, might notice this design is a bit longer than the one you have around your neck. So we got a, a pre-production photo. Hey, here's your render. And there were some folds in there. We were like, oh, this looks like it. OK, order it. And we, they chopped off the last three segments of the challenge. So the, the characters now spell out my name instead of the, uh, the goddess we were suppo uh, supposed to get. Eh, what happens? <laughs> but it's uh, and we fixed it in software. Easy. 
it's luckily we we checked uh, at least uh, Saka took one home and said oh I'll check it and oh crap <laughs> uh, but two weeks ago we received all the boxes of badges and 100% uh, of the badges were not working yeah oh yeah that's uh, worse than we did at Sha where we had 50% of them not working and it, at Sha it wasn't our fault and this was well it was kind of our fault we accepted fake parts so uh, this was this was definitely our fault we did something wrong in uh, reading the data sheet we reversed all the LEDs and other diodes um, yeah uh, for those who are not really into electronics if you reverse a diode it doesn't work yeah okay it does work nicely as a barrier for electricity and it does not make light So, in total, 32 parts were reversed. So that's about 12,000 parts on these little boards that were on the, the, the wrong way round. Uh, our fault, China was closed, and then an epidemic hit, so China was closed even more. So we couldn't fix it there. Say so like, hey, uh, here, here you have it back, try, to try again. Um, no money to do it all over, no time. Um, and this is the, the, f the thing that's hilarious about us. We're not getting better at the process. We're getting better at thinking up fixes. <laughs> so we came up with uh, at least four different fixes. <laughs> a friend of us came up with a new logo for us. We have the domain name. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't have to try it. <laughs> um, so the first fix, the minimum viable product was, okay, we can just swap out the diodes in the power supply you lose the LEDs, but at least the game can work. But it's meh. 21. Uh, then there is, uh, we could reverse all the LEDs and the diodes. That would take at least 30 minutes. It's the nicest, um, the purest edition, we like to call it. Um, but it's very hard to do. At least uh, for me, it's hard to do. Uh, Renzo says, oh, no, it's easy. Just put it on a hot plate and then push it around with a little uh, skewer. And uh, yeah. 30 minutes, uh, even with a trained eye, is too long. 30 minutes times 350 badges is impossible. Um, we could replace all the MOSFETs, and uh, we actually prepared for that. Uh, there's MOSFETs in the circuitry, I'll show you in a bit. Um, we, could, uh, we could swap that out. I even prepared stickers. Uh, okay, Qu uh, pop quiz, a uh, little pop quiz. Capton, at what temperature does it usually supposed to melt? Capton tape. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I ordered some Kapton sheets to isolate uh, some pads so you could solder on top of it. And then uh, I tried soldering on it and it melted at less than 200 degrees where it's supposed to go at 400 degrees. So that was out. Yeah, well. So, but it, it was, was kind of hard to do and it was a lot of high risk steps because you had to cut traces on, on the board and do other stuff. And it was not ideal. But it was doable and it was less than half an hour. We think, we haven't actually tried it. Um, so we came up with the final fix, which was um, removing the MOSFETs entirely and then adding some uh, wires in, which put the ATtiny out of spec. Uh, the ATtiny is spe specified to draw a certain, uh, to, to, uh, to source a certain amount of current. We are way out of uh, the specifications. It would lower our brightness. However, on the upside, it's easy to paralyze, to parallelize, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to par uh, easiest to do. With, with, uh, a bunch of t the tasks can be done by untrained hand, and we did. So, um, step one, we removed five times 350 MOSFETs <laughs> with some pliers because that's the fastest way to do it. Uh, and if you cut carefully, you only damage one board out of 350. So that's good. Yeah, th 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 I, I think there were one or two traces destroyed in this process. So w it was excellent. Um, then there were some diodes in the power supply, which were uh, removed with hot air. And then we put in either the same ones or some new ones. Uh, and then we added in some barge wires. We made a nice little map where you have to add in the wires. I'll show you on the in a bit. Um, 
Thankfully, a few days before this sweatshop, uh, the radio show Angry Nerds wa was on, and I was on a phone call with them, and I said, yeah, we're going to do a sweatshop, and it's going to be epic, but the, the problem is the, the lack of microscopes and uh, proper soldering stations. We, we have the hands, but we don't have all the tools. So uh, two uh, of the hosts were that were present uh, kindly sponsored a bunch of money to be able to purchase a nice soldering station and this awesome little microscope, which is in the batch hacking area. So thank you, Breno and Richard, for helping us out <laughs> in our time of need. And it's slightly blurry, but it it's, uh, shows off the work that we did. You can see one just besides your battery, uh, battery clip on the left. So all those... Uh, uh, th those little groups of free pads with a square around them, that's, uh, that's where uh, MOSFET used to live. Um, and we added in some little barge wires, five of them. So in about 10 hours, I think, we soldered in five times 350 barge wires. So that's uh, 15, 1750 wires. It's a lot of, a lot of them. Um, but they were working. All of them, except uh, I think we broke two or three of them. So yeah. that's why you have margins for error. Not because China is bad at producing them, but because we always mess up. Yeah, you have to be fair about that. Uh, the, the breakage from uh, our production in China is usually between 1% and 2%. And we upped that to about 5%. So uh, another sweatshop happened uh, to make all the bags and to program all the and another night to program all the software in. It's a lot of stuff to do, especially if you have to fix them first. Um, in the matter of eating your own dog food, uh, we used uh, SHA badges to program uh, the code into your badges because we still have a bunch of them. And it's easier to do this than set up a laptop and install some software and some dependencies. And then you have to, uh, to do this Python scripts, which installs another 20 Python scripts, which installs another 20 Python scripts. Or you could just use a SHA badge. So what's coming soon for, this, uh, for the SHA badge? Um, we already have the EEPROM programmer in the hatchery, so you can just do that yourself if you want to. Uh, what's coming uh, soon-ish? I'm looking at Anjan. He's saying, eh, it's going to be soon-ish. Uh, Soon you'll be able to, uh, uh, yeah, the, the code will be released today because we wanted to keep it a little bit secret from you. Um, soon there will be a compiler and a programmer uh, software in the hatchery, so you can just write code for this batch in the hatchery, use a SHA batch to put it on, so you don't need to install tool chains on your laptop, that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, we hope you will use these tools to make a master quest uh, with this batch for next year. Just a, a little challenge for you people. Make a quest for us. That would be cool. So I'm going to switch it over to Sake, who is going to tell you about the quest. <coughs> now be out of your way and say the name. Yeah. OK. Um, first of all, who solved all the challenges? Show your proud design. Throw your badges. Woo! Nice. Well done. Actually, the first two people, or the first three people that solved it was on Friday night. They were working on it like for t 12 hours straight. And big applause for these people because it's really, really amazing. <laughs> for me, this whole frenzy started with a little tweet or a little, little telegram message from Renzo. Like, hey, we're going to do a simple microprocessor and we want, might want to do a game. Are you interested? Well, OK, I'm, I'm interested. And then my life went down the drains. <laughs> because it started with a little processor, and we took a little bigger processor, and, and the ideas for the game were extended. And well, I'm me, so I get carried away. And uh, so I was thinking, I need, I need a game that is, um, it needs to be simple, because it's only 16K of, of, uh, of RAM. We need to address all the hardware, so there's not much room to really design a game. Um, so I was really bugging my mind of how, how am I going to do this. And I ended up designing um, a JSON file format in which everything that you find in a game is just the same type of object. And it has some attributes. So what are the basic ones? You have, a, of course, a description. You have a name. That's what you see if you look at objects. Um, there's an action mask on what you can do with this object. 
can you talk to it? Can you use it? Can you uh, can you look at it from the from the other objects and stuff like that? Um, then there is uh, ACL, so so control access control is. So when can you look at this object? When can you see it? Will it be visible or not? Um, and this has messages like if you if you are trying to look at it and it doesn't, uh, you're not allowed to. You get a message, and then I thought, oh, we we need uh, LED effects and sound effects. So I added the, the effect um, uh, type as well. And basically, that's, that's, this is what controls the whole game. So this is one object. It's the, the one, uh, room 101 in which you, uh, who, who turned on the television? Did you try to turn it off again? <laughs> it really is room 101. Um, one of the fun parts in this is that you can set a state, because the whole game is controlled by state. There's 127 state bits of its in the end, I only lose like 20 or so. But uh, based on these state bits, some things happen or don't happen. And you can actually set a state and use it in the same object again to toggle what you can do. So you can use the minibar once, but you can't use it twice. You get a different message. So that's all been done in this JSON format. And that's what I want. That's, that's my request to you. Like I'm going to describe this JSON format for you. I'm going to give you the tools to compile this uh, JSON format into the, the, the Flash format. And then if we put it somewhere that people can download it, flash it with their other batch, then you have a new game in the batch. So we're open sourcing the, the game format. And I hope you, somebody finds the time and the, and the interest to, to develop new games for this. So when you compile the, the game, I had a 32K um, uh, run uh, to my proposal or to my uh, available and people said 32k what are you doing are you writing a book <laughs> I said no no I need to write a game it needs it needs some room okay so I didn't know I didn't know how many how much room I would uh, need in the end but in the end it turned out to be 20k that uh, that uh, the whole game is 20k of data um, so there's 61 objects in the game and um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I didn't expect people to be working on it this this long, but that's because I always uh, underestimate the time needed to solve my puzzles. I do other puzzles as well. So yeah, for me it was a real, um, real nice journey to to be introduced to the best team and 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 do something useful for the best team. I was on their uh, Telegram list for a while since Hackertel uh, last year. And I wanted to be involved, but like I don't, I can't do a hardware design, I can't do firmware design, I can't do, I can't do anything. Well, I can, I can make a game. So this morning I found my cheat sheet. I have a, a T-shirt, um, a Wireshark keyboard uh, shortcut cheat sheet. It's on the uh, sticker table, and I found it on the table. I said, "Oh, really nice." People look at it, and then I noticed it was used <laughs> as a <laughs> <laughs> just as a piece of paper to solve the, the puzzle from the bed. So that's where my two worlds collide in this little piece of paper. Who was it that used this? <laughs> well, not it, not it. Good, thank you. <laughs> All right, that's that's my part. So I hope you enjoyed the game. Okay, now about the software. Um, let's see how this works. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I was um, invited to help out the badge team. My, I don't know, I don't remember anymore, but uh, I thought yeah, I have a few uh, Spare hours, yeah, I can help him out. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that was a mistake. And so, well, it turned out to be, I think, more than 200 hours, but oh well, it's, uh, it's done. And it, and it worked, and people were enjoying it, so I'm uh, glad I did it. Um, about the microcontroller, I don't know if you can read any of it, but uh, I'll tell you anyway. Um, the AT Tiny is a controller, uh, one of the new ones in the AVR series. And it has a nice set of features that some other uh, AVR controllers don't have, like uh, Arduino and other uh, previous versions. Um, well, already mentioned, we had 16 k of flash, some EEPROM, some SRAM, not much, but uh, good enough. Um, there's a 20 megahertz clock, which we divided in two to get the 10 megahertz uh, we needed. Uh, some Ultra low power clock that's used for timing, uh, um, yeah, other things in the games. Um, the program interface is a single pin interface, so you can just program, debug, and uh, yeah, do it with a single wire. And 
to make things easy for you. Um, we added a little resistor, so you don't have to edit if you want to reprogram it with a um, serial converter. You can just use a simple USB serial converter to program the batch. Um, oh, that will be explained on the batch team website, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a lot of timers inside the chip. Uh, we used a lot of them. Um, <coughs> there is a single, where is it double? I know, there's one of the 16-bit timers that can be split in two. So you have six PDW PDWM uh, channels for the LEDs to set the brightness, and they are synced together. So you can, yeah, just with a little piece of uh, code, you can control all of the LEDs. Uh, without user intervention, it's all interrupt based, and we used uh, yeah about ten interrupts for the whole batch to get everything running. Um, yeah, we had a serial uh, UART inside of it, two wire interface. Uh, yeah, that was a bit troublesome for me because I forgot uh, uh, that's a seven bit address of the chip, and you have to shift it one left, and then you can get some data out of the chip. So I, last night, uh, I think I wasted five hours just to find out that I had to shift the address of the chip uh, to make it talk back to the AT Tiny. and well, five hours left. But still, in the end, it worked, and I was really glad uh, I could fix it in time because we really needed some uh, more lines of code uh, because we were running out of uh, flash space, about 10 times or so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the end, we uh, have two bytes left. That's one instruction word. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it just fits. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah. Another uh, thing on this. AT Tiny is there's a uh, digital to analog converter. It is only eight bits, but it's uh, enough for audio and stuff. Uh, you don't have to use timers to make a PWM wave and filter it and stuff like that to get uh, an uh, analog voltage. And it's easy to use, and we have used it for the audio and for the batch communications. So that was a really nice uh, feature of this chip. Uh, the internal temperature sensor is also used in one of the uh, challenges of the badges. Well, that's uh, that's all cool. But the data sheet, uh, previous data sheets made by Atmel were, well, they were fine, they were nice, nice to read, structure was good. But Microchip bought uh, AVR of uh, Atmel and they made this data sheet, but it's not really readable, at least for me. Um, no addressing mentioned anywhere, I think. Um, Lots of errors, and well, okay. I managed to get working code out of it, but uh, well, it was a pain in the ass, but oh well, next time better. Okay, um, the examples were also unreadable, at least to me. They had uh, this uh, Atmel Studio thing, and you have some examples. And yeah, what I wanted, to, I wanted you to write uh, I square C interrupt routine. Oh, it should be just a few lines of code. But now they split it up in about 20 functions or something like that. In, uh, I think, 10 libraries uh, split. So it was unreadable to me. So, well, in the end, I wrote it myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the software is also, yeah, it's only usable on Windows 10, the AVR Studio. And you can only install it with when the temperature is right and the moon is. Well, yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. OK, now about code. We had, um, this is the main loop, well, parts of it, can fit it on the screen, right? Um, what it does is do some setup, some testing, game state loading, and after that there's a loop, and you see there, if generate audio, that's a thing that does the audio. The audio, if, if there's playing audio, it will consume the most time of the processor, because we needed to play samples, load it, into memory and make some uh, noise and stuff like that. Um, no, okay, audio is taken up the most part. Then we have the games. Um, 
first we have some LED blinking and victory dance. If you complete the badge, you get a nice uh, um, yeah, blinky thing going on. Text adventure, magnet maze, uh, lanyard code, best of dictates. Uh, it's all called from uh, within the main loop. It, they only get a very small amount of time each, and then, well. OK, I'll, I'll hurry up. OK, so it all runs, and yeah. It doesn't take too much time to, to uh, they have, don't have much time to return to the main routine, so audio would else be very glitchy. OK, a uh, bit of things about text venture. We had some cheat codes. I think nobody found out cheat codes, right? Did anyone find out cheat codes? Did anyone try to read out the external EPROM and decode it? I tried both of those and nothing happened. What? What went wrong? IDDQD. IDDQD, yeah, yeah. Oh, you tried, really? Oh, okay. Uh, maybe the, yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. Should work. Maybe. Yeah. I have has, has to be lowercase in this uh, this thing. I think. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well. Oh. Uh. Yeah. There's some hidden cheat codes. There are actual cheat codes. Oh, the hidden cheat code. If you find it, uh, it resets the game state. So you have to start all over, all over again. Oh. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And the priest uh, talks in hexadecimal because um, we needed some uh, more room for the code, so no divisions or modulo except for the um, yeah powers of two. Yeah, only that. So hexadecimal. Okay. Um, some uh, file for resources for doing stuff. Um, decryption. Well, it was decrypt de decrypted, if encrypted, but well, you sh should have been able to solve it. Um, generate audio, well, you have to find out that yourself, you don't have time to do that, but it's just some, there's not really samples on there, it's all, all generated audio, real time, yeah. Okay, uh, long times, no sleep, well, for me at least sometimes, and for other people as well, uh, in the team, yeah. Now, debugging, I swear C, I think I mentioned all of it, there's some errors in the day sheet. Uh, optimizing code was taking a long time, and but at least there were good people helping us and helping me, and yeah, it all went wrong. It, it went well in the end, and we had an awesome badge. So, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I need to speed up. I think. Uh, let's look a little bit at, at the event. There were a lot of people on a quest. Which was fun. So the the first day, the, the f well, the fir technically the second day, the challenge was solved. But even today, I, I saw these people doing the the little maze hidden in plain sight. Uh, when I came into the hotel, I even did I didn't even see it hanging, even though I made the <laughs> damn thing. <laughs> well, I made I made the the printout, uh, the the puzzle was and the the magnets and everything was Sarkis. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, there were some winners to our little challenge. They stayed up until I think 5 a.m. I think they went 4:30 a.m. They went. They were hacking that badge until I think uh, they. I think they spent about 14 hours at least each. Uh, so, Myrtle, A dot, and Tempestas, where are you? Okay, shall we have them up front, Dimitri? Yeah. Shall we do that now? Yeah. I'll give you this. So yeah, here they are, the winners of this crazy contest. They worked through the night. We were, s we were drinking uh, outside, lots of alcohol, and then suddenly someone stormed out. And at first it was Myrtle, followed by the other guys. And Myrtle was really the first one to came out of the restaurant and I was like, yeah, I solved it. <laughs> so that was really cool. And then deciding on the prize, when before Hacker Hotel, Renzi said to me, this is a really hard challenge. If people would know how to solve this, they really deserve something. So basically I had one ticket for the one who solved it. Now it's free, so we'll leave it up to them how to de uh, divide it up to them, but they have a they won a one free ticket for a one-person room. So it's an equivalent worth of like a this year's edition, 250 euros. 
Yeah. So please give it up for the winners of yeah. this badge challenge. And as a, oh, well. and as a nice uh, little commemoration, our friends uh, had some little scarabs left over, so you can add those to your badge. So give them another round of applause, because I need, really need to speed up. Well done. Congratulations, and see you next year. Cool. Maybe you guys, as you are so smart, can make us the new challenge. Yes, hope, I hope so. So, oh, by the way, there is one more badge. This weekend is Disobey in Finland. Um, uh, Renze somehow manages to help out with two badges in one go. He's holding one there. Um, so Disobey, uh, the Finland team, uh, started out with our firmware, added on a lot of stuff. They have a push-to-talk walkie-talkie over Wi-Fi, I think. Um, uh, they run the same code base, they run the same hatchery. Uh, I think they made several thousand units. So the badge team firmware is now at least on 12,000 badges, as far as I can tell, which is ridiculous. <laughs> And now we're on the subject of numbers. Uh, let's give you some more. We made 350 badges. We had 300 for the event. We reserved 10 for a specific sponsor whose uh, condition to sponsor was, hey, I want to buy 10 uh, badges in addition to our sponsor amount. Um, so thank you for that. We had 40 badges for breakage and uh, promo. So that's about 10%, which we usually do 10 or 20%. We had 10,500 LEDs on there which is insane considering it's uh, 350 badges. We had 16 kilograms of AA batteries. Uh, we had two smoking capacitors. Very sorry about that. Uh, uh, somehow with the mounting the battery boxes, uh, we reversed a few and uh, poof. And uh, it's, uh, it's our tantalum capacitors. And tantalum is electrical engineers uh, t terminology for highly uh, flammable. Just so you know. There were, uh, as far as we could tell, zero cheaters or hacks. Lame. Come on. <laughs> Where are all those chip whisperers, voltage glitching, whatever you do? Nobody decrypted the EEPROM. Come on. So I expect you to do your homework this weekend. <laughs> or next weekend. Come on, hack this thing. Let's see if you can figure it all out without you looking at the firmware. So cost breakdown uh, is up next. Um, we spent about 11 euros and 30 cents per badge, roughly 4,000 euros in total. Uh, of which the PCB, just the bare board, was uh, one of the more significant ones, and the components. We had a huge discount on PCB assembly, uh, about $500 worth of discount, so that uh, saved a lot. Sorry? Yeah, because he liked us. <laughs> uh, we bought some USB cereals, some bags. Um, we had a sponsor this year for our drinks and pizza during the sweatshops, so thank you for that. Uh, it really helps out to uh, keep uh, volunteers hydrated and fed and happy so they can do more work for us, so thank you for that. Uh, we spent 6% of the budget on customs. Um, we spent 4% of the budget on batteries. Batteries are stupidly expensive. Um, so we had some sponsors to make this all happen, so I'm going to uh, name them all. Uh, and I'm probably mispronouncing any all of them. So Magion, Stegen Electronics, Access 42. Uh, I can look here. Why am I looking there? Uh, Aureo ICT and Allnet China. Allnet China is also the producer, uh, the the, peop the person who arranged having this produced. So give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> so, so before before Dimitri kills me, I would like to do a f just a little sneak preview about what is next. And um, we're very sorry we have no time for making a batch for Hacker Hotel 21. But feel free to volunteer, make a little challenge for this, do a little design, whatever. We can support you, we can help you out, we can put, give you some input, we can put you in touch with the right people. Um, but it's up to someone else to make the Hacker Hotel batch, because for us, it's MCH 2021, also known as Might Cause Hair Pulling. I, yes, uh, it may contain hackers. And we've, uh, uh, we, we came up with a theme, uh, which I think you'll like, because any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And magic is where we're going to go next with our badge. Um, 
So we set some design goals already, and then I'm really going to close off. Uh, design goals for Merlin's cyber heirloom is, uh, we, on the technical side, we want to make FPGAs truly accessible. Not with this toolchain bullshit, just... <laughs> you cost me hours with your workshop, Paul. <laughs> Uh, th but the tool, tool chains need to go if you want to play with these things at a camp. Um, on the financial side, we have some goals. Uh, we want to make at least 4K units uh, working, so we need to make 4.5 or 5K units. We have a budget of 75,000 euros. That comes down to, if you subtract the VAT and other stuff, roughly 12 euros and 40 cents per badge we can spend. So it's going to be another challenge to get it all done. Uh, it should be for the visitor, the user story, the, the, the thing that's actually most important to get people on your badge. Uh, this, th this was one of the first we actually did a proper user story, and it worked out. Uh, it needs to be a name tag, again. It needs to be super easy to get started. People need to learn something. Well, need, or should be enabled to learn something. You don't need to do anything. It's a holiday. Um, we, want we would like you to embark with others on a quest. More on that in the next months. And we, need to aug and we really need to augment the event. So, timeline, what are we looking at? So this March till August, we're doing proof of concept stuff. Just experimenting with dev kits, uh, tinkering stuff together, get our art uh, and our theme uh, proper, our use story correct. Uh, finding some component sponsors because FPGAs are not cheap. Out of this budget, we cannot do FPGAs. So we need, um, we need to find some sponsors for that. Uh, and then in September, we should be able to do a prototype. Uh, in November, we should have the final design with the art. And then in January, we have final design, final two dot, whatever. And then uh, in February, we can do a test run of final design, final, final, really, final, <laughs> final. And then uh, March, we should be able to go into production, have the Goldmaster firmware. And then in Ju June and July, we should be able to do our sweatshops and do all the rework that needs to be done because we screwed up again. <laughs> and then in August is MCH 2021, so please see us there. So thanks to our batch team. Uh, Guru, Sake, Benatsky, Noor, Neko, Anjan, Tom and Renze, thank you all for this. I didn't put it up. As long as there's no dash in there, it's all good. So, um, we have some honorary batch team members. Uh, Michael Stegen, uh, who has been, us wi uh, been with us since the beginning, helping out at sweatshops while also sponsoring. Thank you for that. Uh, Rob, Rob El Borro, uh, our, uh, our sponsor for the sweatshops, helping out during sweatshops and sponsoring drinks and uh, food. Uh, Yilles, where are you? Not here, he's doing his own workshop. Awesome person, find him, do his workshop, he's, he's great. And uh, OP Raptor also with us since uh, Hacker Hotel last year, I think. Thank you for all your <laughs> shitty add-ons and, and help and, <laughs> and everything. So, we would like, if you're interested in joining us on our quest to make nice quests for MCH21, we would like you to join us. We have a Telegram group, sorry about that, but that's the easiest way to communicate for us right now. Um, and uh, you can join us and uh, have a chat with us. And then if you're really enthusiastic, you can d d uh, join the secret design group, <laughs> which is never, never really a secret. We'll tweet about it anyway. <laughs> uh, but you can join us. Uh, we, would like, uh, we would like you to join us because uh, the team is OK, but we would like some more people with varied skills. From uh, We don't need just electronic designers. We don't need just programmers. We have a, uh, per, uh, someone working on the storyline, someone working on quests, someone working on photography during our sweatshops. Everyone can help out, and it's fun to uh, be part of this team. So that's it, as far as I can uh, tell. So if you have any questions, please let me hear them. Oh, is there, is there not one of those rubber things we can throw around at people, their faces? No? Oh. I haven't been to yeah, any talks, there's, sorry. There's no time. The next talk is already here. Oh, so the next talk is already here. Yes. Oh. Green lads. Green lads. Uh, find Benatsky later. But. Hello. 
Okay. So just before the other talk starts, I would like to have the batch team on stage and I would like to ask our home house photographer, maybe someone can wake him up in the corner over there. I would like to ask him to make a picture of the whole batch team in front of the Hacker Hotel banner because they did an awesome job. So give it up for them again because they had sleepless nights.